everyone. So this has been a requested video and I really, really enjoy watching other people's videos on this topic. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think I'm a generally positive person, but there's something about disappointing products or my favorite was Bentley Blonde, Wendy's um, Crap Products, I think was the name of hers. Um, I don't have a ton of things to show you here because I tend to weed stuff out before it even gets to the purchase point. I watch other YouTube reviews, I swatch in store, I go with my gut going, I don't think that would work for me. And I generally avoid buying not great products in the first place. A lot of these, not a lot of these, a few of these were sent in PR and that's how I get a lot of them because they're not necessarily products I would have chosen in the first place. Um, I know there's a much longer list than what I'm about to show you, but I generally, if it's not gonna work out, I just find someone else who will love it and, and give it to somebody else. And I need to make a note of that and maybe film these more often, but we will find out based on your comments if this is the kind of video you wanna see. So, in no particular order, I'm just looking down at the array in front of me. Let's go through my disappointing products. And I wanna start with one that I put in my disappointing drawer for the life of me, I can't remember why I don't like it, but you all will help me. So that's why I'm including it in the video. I just know I didn't like it. It um, And it was sent to me. It's the L'Oreal Infallible 24, up to 24 hour fresh wear foundation. And they sent me two shades, um, the two lightest shades. I, I can't remember. I feel like it was drying on my skin. Now, to be fair, let me back this up a little bit. I have aging skin, although all of us are aging. We would like to be aging because the alternative is if you're not aging, you're not breathing. But um, I have aging skin, it's mature, it's dry, it's sensitive, it's a lot of work. Um, and I think if I remember correctly, this was drying on my skin and I didn't love the coverage or the wear time. That's what I think. Somebody refresh, I think I mentioned these earlier in either an Instagram story or a live or in a YouTube video, so help me out because I am having a complete blank on why these ended up in that drawer. But they were disappointing apparently to me. Now one I do know about is this one. Um, I picked this up for my recent video on the Milani One Brand Focus and um, I just don't have good luck with Milani liquid products in general. Um, although I've heard really good things about that liquid eyeshadow, so I'm gonna go pick that up. But this is the Milani Soft Focus Glow Complexion Enhancer. And it's a great concept and it has a little pump. And the idea is to use it almost as a primer under your foundation to give you a glow. It's very, they're saying very similar to the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I had a whole video plan to compare the two. The reason why that never happened is because I'm never putting this on my face again. This made me break out so badly. We're not talking like little whiteheads. We're talking big, fat, nasty, cystic, gross, act, gross. Like you can't hide that. And I can't knowingly put something on my face that's going to make that happen. Not even for a video. So um, I can tell you that when I swatched them, I could have done it on my arm. I just don't want this to touch me. Um, I did swatch the Charlotte Tilbury side by side and for all the hype, they are not the same product. And I truly wish that they were because I know that the Hollywood Flawless Filter is not a budget friendly pick for most people. But this does not have the coverage, it does not have the glow, and Charlotte Tilbury doesn't make me break out, and this one does. So I can't recommend this one. Sticking with Charlotte Tilbury, sorry Charlotte. Her mascaras, I have, I found my other one. Um, her mascaras are horrible, <laughs> sorry. The packaging is really pretty. I mean, look at that, I don't know if you can see, the little eyes with on the packaging and the beautiful coppery rose gold packaging. That's about all I can give for it. Um, I tried the Legendary Lashes Volume 2 and I tried the Full Fat Lashes. This is a, like a sample size, travel size. They flake, they smudge, they get all over. Just no. And it doesn't matter how big and fat like the Legendary Lashes did make my lashes. I don't need it on my face. You gotta stay where I put you. So no to these. And there are just so many great mascaras, both high-end and drugstore out there that if it's not working, I don't even give it a second chance. Let's stick with mascaras. Speaking of drugstore, um, L'Oreal sent me their new ones. These are the unlimited mascaras. This is the waterproof version in the blue, and then the black is various shades of black. So the gimmick here, and I like L'Oreal mascara. My probably favorite drugstore mascara is currently the Voluminous Lash Paradise. So the idea is 
you have this wand. It's sort of a cone-shaped wand with the rubber bristles all around and it's tapered. That's all good. And then you have this notch here on the wand and you're like, okay, that's great. What's that for? The idea is you push it and now it's bent. So it makes it easier to get in there and kind of like a play on the Lancome Grandiose, um, the one that hooks, except it just stays on a permanent hook. This one you can straighten if you want to keep it straightened and bend it if you want to bend it. So that's fun and that's all well and good and that part is a great idea. The problem is the mascara does nothing. It's like you're wearing nothing. You just tinted them black. There's no volume, there's no length, there's no fullness. That's a complete waste of my time. I don't need that. Um, I could just leave my lashes bare. We don't know why we're frizzing. I didn't use my new Colleen Rothschild hair serum, that's why. Okay, um, another disappointing mascara was sent to me from Almay. It's their multi-benefit mascara. And it was the same problem, basically, is that it doesn't, it looks like it's gonna give you a lot of payoff. It has a nice, thick bristle brush. And I figured I'm gonna get some big fat lashes out of this. Nope, nothing, just spidery, darker lashes. Now, if you're looking for a natural look, then maybe you will like these. I don't think the point of wearing mascara is to look natural. So, I mean, I want lots going on. So that's a personal preference. Sticking with lashes. Oh, Rimmel, I'm sorry. Um, because one of my other all-time favorite drugstore mascaras is a Rimmel one, the Wow Wings one. I'm wearing it today, actually. So it's not like I hate the whole brand. There's some that I really love. Um, this is from Rimmel. They did send this to me too. It is their Lash Accelerator Serum with Grow Lash Complex. And, um, you know, I think it's similar to all, the concept is similar to, like I'm using Revita Lash or Grande Lash, anything that at night you put on your lashes to make them grow. And it has the tiniest of little brushes to paint along your lash line at night. And I was so excited, a drugstore priced lash growth serum. Yes, please. Except when I, I tried this for a few days and every morning I just woke up with like gooey crustiness, not as an allergic reaction. It, this stuff dries like, how do I describe it? You know the, um, like when you buy something that's attached to cardboard or, or paper packaging and you peel it off and there's that gooey residue on the back that you can like pull off and ball up and that's what it, that's what this turns into. If someone's had a different experience, please let me know. But three nights in a row, I used this. And three mornings in a row, I woke up peeling goo off my eyelids. No, thank you. Here's a higher end option. It is the It Brow Power. Um, it's their pencil. And I think there's various versions of this brow pencil. And here's what I love about it. I love that it has a spoolie on one end. And I love the universal taupe color. And it's, it's thin, but it's... It's thin, but it's like wedge-shaped at the same time. So you can really get in there and do your thing. The problem is, and watch, it won't do it as I'm showing you this. Yep, it's not doing it. It usually, but not when I'm trying to actually demonstrate it. Seriously? Okay, maybe I'm gonna keep this and give it another go. I've had three of these over the years, and all three of them, when you turn it down, the lead falls right out. Of course, or it's not lead, but you know what I mean. The pencil falls right out. Of course, as I'm demonstrating this on camera, much like when you ask a child to perform on camera, it doesn't, they don't. So um, please let me know if I'm the only person that's had that problem where the actual brow pencil just falls out of the container. Cause it's not just this one, <laughs> it's been two others of the more skinny pencil kind. There's nothing wrong with the actual formula. All that part is great. It's just, I've had some flaws with my packaging. Okay, these were also both sent to me and I was really excited for these to work because I do travel about monthly, whether I'm visiting one of my kids, taking somebody to college for orientation, blogging conference, whatever. I've been, I've been on the road a few times in the last few months and I have a lot coming up in the summer as well. And so anything that I don't have to have classified as a liquid when I'm traveling, awesome. So these are both the same thing. It's the Garnier Skin Active Micellar Eye Makeup Remover Pads. And then from Almay, it is their Makeup Free Zone. Also, eye makeup remover pads. Um, these guys. Nothing. They're dry. Both of them. This, this goes for both of them. I'm not picking on one brand here. Um, they're all, like, there's no point. There is no point to these. You're rubbing so hard on your lid to get anything off. That's not good. 
Um, I tried stirring them upside down so that they would be wetter when I, you know, took one out to use. It doesn't get rid of diddly and you're rubbing and rubbing on your eye. You might as well just go do what I do when I'm really trying to cut down on my liquids is I will take cotton rounds and soak them in my Bioderma micellar water, put them in a little snack size baggie and use those. So new. No. If again, as with any of these products, this is just my personal, obviously I shouldn't even have to say this, but I will. This is my personal experience. Some of these may have worked out amazing for you. And if that is the case, please let me know. I would love to know how you made it work. I love almost everything Flower Beauty has made. I'm wearing Flower Beauty foundation right now. I think I mentioned that, but this was not good for me. This was their Galaxy Glaze Holographic Lip Gloss. I picked it up. I don't know what shade this is. It's a shade. It's angelic. It looks angelic. It looks like a beautiful shade that would be great to top over anything. And it is. The problem is, I don't know if you can see this. Let's see if it'll behave. You probably can't because I'm filming early in the morning and the sun is just bright. But there are tiny little glitter, micro glitter particles in this. And you can feel it on your lips. It feels like you have very, very, very fine grade sandpaper on your lips. And you're just like, what is on me? So I love the concept. Do not like the texture. Sorry, Flower Beauty, I love you. And the last product, I think I've mentioned this before, but let's make it official and put it in the disappointing products category. The Lorac Pro 3 palette. So when this came out, I thought this is it. This is gonna be my go-to palette. It's every shade that screams my name. I mean, the shimmers, the nudes, they're, they're not cool toned. They're just everything that I want in an eyeshadow palette. The problem is I can create amazing eye looks with this palette, but within an hour, especially with the shimmers, which are always my favorite, obviously, they're gone. They've like evaporated out into the universe. I don't know, like, it's not that there's necessarily fallout on my cheeks sometimes. It's just like the wind blew or something and it just whoosh, it's all gone. It doesn't stay on my eyes. I'm pretty sure I could use a really sticky, grippy primer and maybe that'll work, but it shouldn't have to, especially because this is not drugstore. This should work no matter what. Like I feel with any product, whether you're paying $2 for it or $100 for it, you shouldn't have to work with it to make it work for you. It should just be a go right from the get-go. Um, this, this, I, I refuse to give up on this because these colors, but I'm just not, I don't know. It's not working for me. I would love to hear feedback from you on that, on this one. Is, does, do you, am I the only one? Like, what is wrong with me? I don't know. It could be me. It's usually me. Um, but anyway, that is it for my current disappointing products. I will do a better job of keeping them before I throw them away or find them a new home so I can keep this series going. Um, but it won't be like a monthly thing or anything like that. If we're lucky, if we're lucky, I'll never have another one because every product will work out for me, but it just never works out that way, unfortunately. So, oh, now I have glitter on my fingers. Let me know what you think, what your experience has been, and if you've had a disappointing product come across your makeup counter recently, warn us all. Leave that in the comments below as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.